Good morning students. Today I will discuss one of the important glands in our body and you know in general glands are classified in two subgroups. One is endocrine gland and another one is exocrine glands. The endocrine glands is having no ducts but exocrine gland having ducts. But today I will discuss one of the important endocrine glands in our body and that gland is the thyroid gland. The thyroid gland it is present in front of the neck in the lower part and opposite to the C5 to T1 vertebra and it is present in front and on each side of the trachea. Weight of thyroid gland it is 25 grams and the length of each lateral lobe about 5 centimeter and transversely about 3 centimeter and the thickness is about 2 centimeter. So, this is the dimensions of the thyroid gland particularly the lateral lobe and the dimension of the isthmus it is about 1.25 centimeter on it each side. This is square separate 1.25, 1.25, 1.25 and 1.25 centimeter is the four borders of the isthmus. I will discuss the different anatomical features of the gland. You can see this is thyroid gland and the two mass on each side I am holding with my fingers of both hands and they are interconnected in the midline by a tissue of thyroid gland that is called the isthmus. So, isthmus it connects the two lateral lobes. This is one lateral lobe, this is another lateral lobe and they are interconnected by isthmus. If I discuss the lateral lobe of either right side or left side, the features are same. Each lobe it is pyramidal or conical in shape having the apex which is directed upwards and base is broad it is downwards. This is base, this is apex and this is the main part of the gland which is having mainly two borders. This is anterior border and this is posterior border. How to identify the anterior border and posterior border you must know. The anterior border it is thin. This is anterior border of this side and anterior border of this side. And if I rotate it posteriorly, you can see the posterior border of this side and this side, these are round border, posterior border. Not only that, the anterior border, it extends up to the isthmus. You know this is isthmus, this is isthmus. So, this anterior border, it extends up to the isthmus. But the posterior border here, it extends up to the lower pole or up to the base and there are three surfaces. One is medial surface which is concave. Can you see the concavity? The concave medial surface and here also on this side also it is concave. Medial surface is concave and this is another surface. This is called anterolateral surface and this is another surface called posterolateral surface. So, all together there are three surfaces, medial surface, then anterolateral surface, then posterolateral surface. But the anterolateral and posterolateral surface, they are demarcated by very ill-defined border. But defined border are anterior border. The anterior border, it demarcates the medial surface from the anterolateral surface and the posterior border it demarcates the medial surface from the posterolateral surface. Now, the isthmus, this one, it is quadrilateral having four borders. This is upper border, this is lower border, but the lateral border they are merged with the lateral lobe of the thyroid gland. So, this is upper border, this is lower border. Anterior surface of the isthmus, this one and posterior surface of the isthmus. The isthmus, it is at the level of second and third tracheal ring, but the base it extends up to the fourth and fifth tracheal ring. 
now i have to hold the thyroid in anatomical position how to hold the apex it is not only directed upwards also it is directed obliquely and going upwards and laterally up to the oblique line of thyroid cartilage so that it cannot extend above the thyroid cartilage above the oblique line of thyroid cartilage because anteriorly there is one muscle is there that is called the sternothyroid muscle which prevents the upward displacement of the thyroid gland because of the attachment of the muscle on the oblique line and also medially there is one muscle is there called inferior constrictor so the apex it is sandwiched between the inferior constrictor and the sternothyroid muscle so this is the reason why the thyroid gland or the apex of thyroid gland cannot move above the oblique line of thyroid cartilage so now we know the borders we know the surfaces we know the base of the lateral lobe we know the apex of the lateral lobe and we know the isthmus so i have to hold the gland in this way with by my two hands so that the the apex of the lateral lobe it is directed upwards and placed obliquely and base downwards and isthmus in the middle this is the anatomical position then you can see one another feature of this thyroid gland this one this is the pyramidal lobe pyramidal lobe it is not always present but it is present in this particular specimen and it is extending upwards from the upper border of the isthmus this is the isthmus upper border of the isthmus it is extending upwards sometimes the pyramidal lobe may be adjacent to the lateral lobe not from the midline usually from the left side and from the apex of the pyramidal lobe there may be a ligament that is called the levator glanduli thyroidi this levator glanduli thyroidi it extend from the apex of the pyramidal lobe up to the hyoid bone but sometimes this levator glandular thyroid may extend from the upper border of the isthmus where there is no pyramidal lobe so we know now the levator glandular thyroid it is a fibromuscular structure the muscular part uh, may derive from the Uh, one muscle that is sternohyoid muscle and this ligament may extend from the uh, upper border of the isthmus up to the hyoid bone or may extend from the uh, apex of the pyramidal lobe when it is present up to the hyoid bone and this ligament may be present or may not be present pyramidal lobe may be present may not be present so this fibromuscular band also called musculus levator glanduli thyroid and the name itself indicates that it elevates the thyroid gland so the name is levator glanduli thyroid